Okay, everybody. Well, I just spent about a good two hours herping, maybe, um, going up and down this local spring here. It's a real beautiful place. Plenty of rocks to flip. Beautiful area. Beautiful area. Um, uh, today was actually a very, very successful today. Um, it's about uh, 6.11, my clock says. Um, and that means it's going to be getting kind of dark here soon because it's still not getting light at real good times anymore. So, um, let me show you what I found. Okay, so first things first, you can see there's three frogs right there and a bunch more right here. A bunch more. And uh, frogs aren't the only thing I found. And uh, so I guess I'll just start showing you one by one here. Okay, so this one right here I believe is a northern two-line salamander. What's really cool, and which is also kind of confusing, is uh, its tail. You can see that it has a laterally compressed tail. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's uh, common in northern two-line salamanders, but uh, considering that uh, we found like literally dozens of these things before here, of uh, northern two-line salamanders here, I would say, I would say it's pretty safe to say that uh, it's actually a two-line salamander. These guys are main, mainly insectivores. Um, adults typically uh, consume a wide variety of insects, um, including beetles, uh, mayflies, springtail, spiders, and centipedes, which actually I saw some pretty wicked-looking centipedes under some rocks right near one of these guys, actually. Something different to notice about this salamander is... Um, Actually, not any really, anything really that physical, but um, actually it has to do with the time of the year. This is getting awfully close to the breeding season of these guys. Um, they breed largely from May, or uh, October to May. And what the female does is she uh, actually uses something called internal fertilization, which means um, she uh, collects something called uh, spermatophores in her cloaca, and that's where the fertilization occurs. These guys may lay uh, as little as 15 eggs, all the way up to thousands. Now these guys generally live, generally live uh, particularly where I found them, which is, um, of course, uh, a creek. Right there is the creek. You can probably hear it in the background. But um, they don't really live too much elsewhere than that. Uh, you can find them under logs, rocks, anything really. Debris, leaf litter, anything. An interesting thing about uh, these guys... Um, in particular this one, which I've never actually taken the time to notice before, is actually the underbelly. Get a good shot of it here. There you go. You can see it's that bright, bright yellow there. I've never noticed that before. As you can see right here, the belly of this thing is a bright yellow, yellowish to a green, um, on the bottom there. And this one is looking in uh, this one in particular is looking pretty large. And because of the time of the year, being close to its mating season, and the size of its large belly, um, I'm gonna make a judgment here and say that this is actually a pregnant female. Oh, damn. Okay, let's see if I can keep this guy in my hand long enough. This guy right here is actually, um, not what I thought it was at first. Last year I found these guys and I called them a dusky salamander. This is actually the Allegheny Mountain dusky salamander. Um, this species is abundant in Pennsylvania. Uh, these guys can range anywhere from about uh, close to three inches to about uh, four and a quarter inches. Um, they're found mostly in like moist, deciduous, or mixed, you know, mixed forests. Uh, Small streams like the one I'm at. Uh, this one was actually found in spring. Um, that was actually uh, acting as a contributary to uh, the creek that I'm at right now. Um, these guys are actually really cool looking. They got these... Uh, let's see if this camera is detailed enough to get them. But they actually have these really cool like blue dots along the side of them here. Um, I don't know if I can see it in the camera here, but I'll definitely pick it up with their, with my Nikon. But, um...
slightly longer than the body. This guy in my hand. Now this guy right here is absolutely one of my favorites to catch out of all species of salamanders that I've caught so far. Um, I mean, catch the dang thing. Where'd he go? There's so many things in here. It's kind of, so many things in here. It's kind of this is the northern red salamander. Uh, this one actually comes in a couple different colorations. Uh, they can be um, brighter than this one, which it, uh, this one is actually a pretty dull. Okay, so I gotta kind of wrap things up here. Um, the sun's starting to go down, but um, last but not least is this guy. This is actually the pickerel frog. Um, these guys are largely abundant in this area, and as you can see, I got probably about a dozen of them here. Um, very, very cool species. Uh, some of the distinguishing features, and let's see if I can get another one here as a better example, like this guy right here. Either one will do. Okay, that one just hopped away on me, so it's time to get another one. See if I learned my lesson here. Um, these guys uh, basically have um, some of the distinguishing features um, they have is, you know, they have circular spots. The leopard frog, which is a little bit less common, generally does not have circle, circular spots on it. Um, they also have these two stripes here. The problem with pickerel frogs is they look extremely much like um, the leopard frog. But the fact of the matter is you're much more likely, at least around here, to find uh, a pickerel frog than, say, a leopard frog. The number one most distinguishing feature, see if I can find a good example. I'll use this guy right here. Is, um... Sorry, this one almost got away too here. Um, but the absolutely most distinguishing feature about these guys that separates them completely from, uh, say, the leopard frog is what you see right here. The, the insides of these guys' thighs are bright yellow. Um, this is generally how I decipher whether or not these are uh, leopard frogs or pickerel frogs. And um, it looks like all the frogs I have here are uh, definitely pickerel frogs.